Hello and welcome to this session. In the previous video, we discussed that one of the most important inputs into a comparable company analysis or multiples valuation is the LTM or last 12 month data computations. We saw that the LTM data is not provided in the financial statements and we learned how to compute it using only one annual and one quarterly filings. So that is the LTM computations and if you have not watched it, I have provided the link in the description so you can watch that one first and then come back and watch this video. The main point of using the LTM data is to use the most currently available data in constructing the multiples. There is another important method and data manipulation you may need to do before you actually start constructing your multiples. And that method is called calendarization. We need to calendarize the data in order to make sure that we are comparing companies for exactly the same period. As it will be clear soon, the last 12 month numbers for two companies that are reporting financials based on two different cycles are not telling us the relevant numbers for exactly the same periods. For example, Assume that we are valuing Amazon that reports for the fiscal year ended December 31st, the same as calendar year. Also assume that as a comparable company, you are using Walmart that its fiscal year ends on January 31st instead of December 31st. Now let's go and see if we compute the LTM data for these two companies, what will happen? Let's start with Amazon, which is the company we are valuing. Assume that we are now on December 2019 and the third quarterly filing for 2019 is out, but of course not the annual filing yet. To get the LTM data, as discussed in the previous video, we get the data for previous fiscal year that is coming from the most recent annual filing. And then we add the year-to-date data from the most recent quarterly filing and then deduct the year-to-date data for the prior year. You see that the year-to-date data here are from January 1st to September 30th. If we do that, we get the LTM data that is associated with the period October 1st, 2018 to September 30th, 2019. As a side note, you may wonder why when we compute the LTM data, we do not simply add the first three quarters of 2019 and the last quarter of 2018 to get the last 12 month data. The reason is that it's not common to have Q4 results separately. Instead, companies usually file the first three quarters and then an annual filing. So you cannot typically get the Q4 results directly. And if you need it, which in fact, sometimes you would need it for a calendarization, for example, you have to get the annual filings and then deduct the relevant Q1, Q2, Q3 numbers to come up with the Q4 results. To summarize, the way we compute the LTM data here requires only two financial statements, whereas other possible ways would typically require, in fact, collecting more data from more statements. Now let's look at Walmart, the comparable company that has fiscal year ending January 31st instead of December 31st. Again, remember that we are valuing these companies on December 2019 when the third quarterly filing for 2019 is out, but not the annual filing. Note that here the year and the first quarter starts from February 1st, whereas in case of Amazon, the first quarter was starting from January 1st. So now let's continue to compute the LTM data for Walmart. I get the data for the last annual filing. I add the year to date number for this year and deduct the year to date number from the prior year. It gives me the last 12 month data, but 
as you see, it's for the period November 1st, 2018 to October 30th, 2019, which is not exactly the same as the one from Amazon. Although in both cases, we are computing the numbers for the past four quarterly filings. The reason is exactly because these companies have different cycles for reporting. For example, the third quarter 2019 for Amazon is reporting for July, August, and September, while the Q3 numbers for Walmart is reporting numbers for August, September, October. So you may wonder if that could be an issue or not. Well, it could be definitely an issue. Assume that the month of October is a very important month for these companies and their earnings. And assume that October 2018 was a really bad month, but October 2019 was an extremely good month for these businesses. Your LTM number from Amazon includes October 2018, which was the bad year, and exclude October 2019, which was an extremely good year. The opposite is true for Walmart. October 2018, which was a bad year, is excluded from the LTM computation, but October 2019, which was a good month, is included in the computation. So even if the earnings of the two companies are exactly equal to each other month by month, the LTM numbers we will be computing would be different because they are for different periods. To fix this issue, we will have to calendarize the numbers. Calendarization would adjust financial ending dates for the comps to be consistent with that of the company you are valuing. Since we are valuing Amazon here, I would need to adjust the ending dates for Walmart to be consistent and to be the same as Amazon. So again, if you look at the details, we see that for Walmart, the regular LTM data would be from November 1st, 2018 to October 30th, 2019. But I want to be from October 1st, 2018 to September 30th, 2019. How can we compute this? I can get the last annual filings, add to that the current year to September numbers, so from February 1st to September 30th, and then deduct the same period, which is February 1 to September 30th of the last year. This gives me an LTM number that is for the same period as the one computed for Amazon. So it's the calendarized LTM number based on Amazon fiscal year. Now, the issue is how to compute numbers for February 1st to September 30th period. Well, from the Q3 filings or the third quarterly filings, I have the year to date numbers that reports from February 1st to October 30th. If I was given the data for uh, October separately, I could have deducted the month of October from the year to date number and get the data for the period from February to September. Unfortunately, we do not get the data month by month, so we have to find the second best solution. In quarterly three filings, we do get the data for the third quarter separately. If so, I can estimate the data for October to be one third of the Q3 data. I deduct that number from year to date data and it gives me an estimated number of the period from February 1st to September 30th. I do the same for last year as well. Know that in this setup, I still only need one annual filing which is for the year 2018 and the Q3 filings for each company. For Amazon, it's a standard. For the LTM numbers, I only need the last annual data, the current stop and the prior stop. For Walmart, I need this data, but in addition, I would need data for Q3 2019 and Q3 2018 separately also. Now let's go and get these numbers from the actual filings of the two companies and compute the calendarized LTM earnings per share, for example. Let's start with the easy one, uh, Amazon. 
I go to the annual filings for 2018 and find the reported financial statements. Diluted earning per share is reported to be 2014 for the year 2018. I add this number uh, in my Excel sheet. Okay. Now I need year to date numbers for 2019 and 2018, which should be in Q3 filings of 2019. So here it is. The current stop is reported to be 16.53, and the prior stop is 14.10. I copy these numbers as well in my Excel sheet. Okay, now I have all numbers I need to compute the LTM earnings per share for Amazon. Now let's go to Walmart to compute both the LTM and calendarized LTM numbers. As discussed, we need not only the above three numbers, but also Q3 2018 and Q3 2019 separately. First, I go to get the most recent annual filing, which is for fiscal year ending January 31st, 2019. I go to the income statements, Okay, here it is. Diluted earning per share for the last fiscal year is 226. You should be careful not to be confused by year mentioned above. We get the number below 2019, but this is for fiscal year ending January 31st, 2019, which is in fact reporting earnings of year 2018 mostly. Since this is reporting earnings from February 2018 to the end of January 2019. Anyways, the earnings per share for the most recent fiscal year is 226. I entered that in my Excel file. Okay, now I need to go to the Q3 filings for 2019. There I can get both the year to date numbers for 2018 and 2019 and also Q3 numbers for 2019 and 2018. Okay, here I have all the information I need. First, I needed the year-to-date numbers for 2019 and 2018. These are given in the last two columns and they are 374 and 101. Okay, I entered these numbers in my Excel file as well. Uh, the last two numbers I need are the earnings per share for Q3, 2019 and 2018. These are given in the first two columns respectively. As you see, diluted earnings per share numbers are 115 and 0.58 for the last three months ended October 31st, which is the Q3 2019 for Walmart. I entered these numbers in Excel 2 and now I am done with all the inputs I needed. To compute the LTM earnings per share numbers for Amazon, I start with the last annual filing, add to it the year to date from 2019 and deduct the year to date number for 2018 and I get the LTM diluted earning per share of $22.57. Now let's go to compute the LTM data for Walmart the same way. If I add the year-to-date numbers from 2019 to the prior annual number and deduct the year-to-date number for 2018, I get 499 as the LTM earnings per share. Again, note that this is the number for the past four quarters based on Walmart reporting cycle, which is in fact giving us the number for the period November 1st, 2018 to October 30th, 2019, which is not the same as the one from Amazon, as you can see. To calendarize this number, we need adjustments to year to date numbers for 2018 and 2019, Specifically, we needed to deduct from the year-to-date numbers one-third of the Q3 data, both for 2018 and 2019. So let's do that. 
we get the calendarized year to date 2019 as the year to date number from 2019 minus one third of the Q3 2019. We do the same for 2018. It's the year to date number from 2018 minus a third of Q3 2018. Now I can use the general formula that the LTM earnings per share would be equal to the last annual filings number plus the calendarized year to date number from 2019 minus the calendarized year to date number from 2018. This gives me calendarized diluted earning per share number for Walmart that is 4.80. As you see, the calendarized earnings per share for Walmart is less than its LTM number. The reason is that, as you see, Q3 2018 has been a bad year, while Q3 2019 has been a good year for Walmart. When we calendarize here, we're essentially pushing the numbers for Walmart back on time. And since uh, Q3 2018 was worse than Q3 2019, by pushing backwards, Walmart's earnings looks worse. So you can test that if the Q3 2018 number was the same as Q3 2019, the LTM and calendarized LTM would have been the same as you can see. With the similar logic, if Q3 2018 was higher than Q3 2019, everything else equal, we would have got a calendarized LTM number for Walmart that is higher than its LTM number. So all in all, calendarization could make one company looks either better, worse, or not much uh, different. As a last note, I suggest not to memorize any formula for calendarization. Try to understand the logic as I highlighted here and find a way to calendarize the numbers as we just did. So to recap, in case companies report their financial statements on different cycles, it's very important to calendarize the numbers before constructing your multiples and comparing companies. By calendarizing the numbers, we will be comparing data for exactly the same period across companies, which is essential to do when you are conducting a multiple valuation. I hope this session was useful for you and thanks for watching.